Hello there, thanks for stopping by. Welcome to Messing About with an Arrow Boat. This episode, we're doing a bit of this. A bit more of this. And an awful lot more of that. And all as we focus on getting the cable tray and cable runs sorted, ready for the electrics. So narrow boat cable trays, that's where we put, we put all the cables uh, for running along the boat in at 14 metres or basically 45 feet. It's quite a long way to run cables. So there are a few options. Some people put a cable tray, or quite a lot of people put a cable tray up the middle of the boat, which kind of splits uh, the ceiling halfway. That's got some advantages in terms of fitting uh, the rest of the wood, because you're only using, <coughs> uh, the sheet supply will fit quite nicely on there at four foot wide. Uh, some people put the cable trays up here. Uh, but again, that's going to take quite a lot of space and we've got other ideas for the ceiling. So we don't want to do that. Uh, our plan is to put the cable tray under the gunnels, port and starboard side. Uh, and I'm just going to start measuring up how that's all going to fit. So DC cables and AC cables need to be kept separate. And then we can keep separate in a bit of conduit, this stuff here. Um, but for long runs, it's not recommended that they are kept together. So we need to find a way to make sure that the AC and the DC cables are separate. And the reason they are, are technical, but basically you can get some uh, induction, is it induction or fusion? One of those two things from uh, the, the different uh, signal types, AC and DC, and they can jump over and cause shorts. So that's the BSS, the boat safety scheme said, keep them separate. Um, so that's what we're going so to do. If you look under the gunnels, we've got some battens. So if we put a shelf here, then we can drill a hole through there and the DC cables can go up there. But if we put the AC run along here, which is what my intention is, and you run it up, you're still running cables over your DC cable, so we have to run it through the back. But I don't know if you can see that, there's a big bit of steel there. So I'm not going to drill through that bit of steel. I need to come up with a way to make that work. An AC cable is pretty thick, so um, yeah, we just need to find a way, probably to raise the tray off of there a bit. So I've come up with an idea, something like this. This is just a little mock-up. So top of the tray, a little bit of spacer, another spacer and the bottom of the tray. I don't really need to worry about the bottom of the tray at the moment because that will fit under the gunnels like that. And so it will get fastened on when we do the, the lining. But there are a few considerations. So the first one is, will the cable go down the back? And the answer is, yep. And then it can be rooted up. There's only a few, there's only a few places where there are going to be sockets above the gunnels. Uh, the kitchen really is the only place. Yep, can't think of anywhere else, just in, in the kitchen above the countertop. So. You know. And the other consideration is the angle. 
of the wall, oh, sorry, side, <laughs> uh, as you can see quite clearly there, so you start to get uh, gap reduction. So when I'm looking at the cable tray, we just need to make sure that it is following the same angle. And the other consideration is height. So, standard uh, kitchen, UK kitchen height with, with the worktop is 93 millimeters. So, if I put the cable tray there, this little mock up that I've made is only 40 mil as a gap in there. Um, that is below that countertop. So I need to find a way to shorten it a bit. But that's easy enough, that's the whole point of measuring, right? The reason I chose the spacing I did is actually 30 mil, not 40. Um, it's really just to get conduit in. But I think it'll be okay. I could get away with just putting on some straight uh, cable tray straight onto the battening. Uh, and then where necessary for the, the two or three places that I've got AC going up, I can make a gap like that and it will just drop down. That should be okay. But really the crucial thing is the countertop. Um, when we put the side lining up that's going to come down a bit but you know we don't want it to clash and become below the kitchen surface that that's just not going to work at all so i just need to do a lot of measuring and make sure that that final height uh isn't going to go anywhere near the counter yeah, so I've been playing around with this for a little while. I thought if I cut slots in the batten there and screwed that on, that would give the uh, lining something to hang on to, you know, so, and it's level and it's even. Uh, and then I had to play around and think, well, actually, if that's the ply lining, and there is, there is enough room that way. There is enough room in there for the cable. So the only question is, oh, I've dropped it. So the only question is the 240 cable. And I reckon there's enough room in there and the angle's right to just drill a hole in that batten and bring it up. It's quite flexible, this stuff, so. It's, it's got loads of room to move. So I think what I should do now is verify facts. I think I'll go and mark out where all the electric sockets are going to go. And that will give me a, a better idea uh, of where things are going to fit. And if my ideas are right. Let me know in the comments if you've got your own boat, what you did under the gunnels. Uh, quite appreciate that. I've seen a few different vlogs. Uh, but you know, that level of detail people just don't go into. So I'm just, it would be nice. Yeah, leave a comment if you've done it and let me know what you did. It would be helpful. Thanks. took a wee while. That's all the AC sockets all marked out. I moved a couple from my original plan. Um, so I've marked out the kitchen and everything so I know where all the, the appliances are going. But I had a double socket on the worktop 
here, uh, which is oh, sticky bit of uh, which is right below the window. And I decided that uh, having a socket below a window uh, is probably not such a good idea, particularly when you can lift those windows out and if you don't catch it fast enough, there could potentially be rain come in. So I thought that was a particularly stupid idea. <laughs> so I've moved the socket uh, over a little bit. Um, so that, that tells me that uh, there's only one, two, three, three sockets to go above the gunnels and they are all in the galley so i think i can work around that i'll find a way to adapt to overcome and i don't need to then start making complicated cable trays with with voids in it and all that sort of stuff uh, I'm much happier that I sat and worked all of that out. So the next job is to do exactly the same with the DC cables. That's another job done. That took, that took longer than I thought it was going to do. But then, you know, <laughs> they always do, don't they? Um, but everything's marked out, all the sockets, all the cable runs, um, TV aerial, yeah, uh, internet aerials, uh, light switches, all that sort of stuff. I've moved a few from my original plans just because of for the same reason I felt they were just under the window. Uh, which of course lesson learned should have been, well, I should have known that. Uh, yeah, I should have, but you know, easy enough to draw on the wall, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, good exercise, worth the, worth the effort, I guess, uh, just to validate everything. It's also allowed me to look at the cable run, the DC cable run in the ceiling at the edges for roof mounted stuff, you know, nav lights, uh, solar power, that sort of stuff. Uh, the battening in this boat, I think, the, the standard from the boat builder is a centre cable tray. Uh, that's the way they think, uh, because when I look at when I look at how they put the um, the battening up on the ceiling, it's definitely that way inclined. Uh, but I've found a way around that, so I'm quite happy. And there's not going to be many ceiling cables, and they're clearly the lights, but they're only two and a half mil, so. They're tiny, um, <clears throat> so uh, the biggest the biggest cable that's going up there is a six mil solar cable, and there's four of them. Uh, but again, that's not going to present too much of an issue. Now that I know where all the cables are going. Time to go and trim some spray foam. Oh, great! Yay! So the AC cable run is going along the middle batten. Now that is above the water line by 300 mil, which satisfies both the RCR and the BSS. And it's all covered in spray foam. Well, it's not too bad. I'll just rip it off. That'll take a while.
So that's all done. The primary batten for the AC is all cleared of any errant spray foam. So I'm just going to tidy up now as usual. Uh, we'll crack on tomorrow. And while I was tidying up, I decided to get the wood off the floor, put up some battens and just somewhere to slide some wood. Hey look, for the first time in ages, it's not raining, it's not grey, it's not miserable. It's a bit cloudy, but we've got some sunshine. Hey! So I hope you don't mind me waffling on in the last segment, and if you made it through the last segment, uh, congratulations. <laughs> that was a load of waffle. It was just me thinking aloud, as I often do, uh, when I'm doing things that I've never done before. I try things out, I kind of suss them out. You know, you watch vlogs and you see people going, oh, we'll put the cable run here, and it's like, why? Uh, how? So. That was really just my day yesterday, was just figuring out the how and the why and uh, validating everything that was in my head. So I hope you don't mind, uh, but I certainly found it extremely helpful. Train. Yeah, so today, uh, just now that I know exactly where all the cable runs are going to be, I'm just gonna clear some spray foam, clear some channels, move everything off, to the port side and start on the starboard side. So as part of the final verification and thinking about things last night, I brought down some of the tongue and groove. Uh, now either by planning or by sheer dumb luck, there's enough room to get cables through the back here quite easily and then up through the batten and moreover when I put the shelf in, it's got something to sit on and all the DC cables can sit under there quite happily. Well thought out, probably overthought, let's be honest, <laughs> but uh, I am kind of happy now that by the end of today I'm going to be ready for first fix on the electrics, on the port side at least. The jobs today, pretty simple. Uh, I want to cut a channel through behind the wooden battens here. I don't really want to drill through the wood because there's nothing behind there. Um, and then I'll go through the spray foam at the top. There's a few like that, jutty out bits that will stop the tray going in. So, spray foam trimming time. What I've decided to do while I'm here and made the effort to make the holes is I'll stick some conduit in. And that way it's done. Done for later. I don't need to worry about it. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's important or not, but uh, at least I know that the conduit fits, really. And then the cable. Through the conduit. And that stops. That stops any risk of any chafing when the boat is vibrating or moving from uh, the edges of the wood. There, I think that's what we'll do all the way along. It doesn't take very long. This is the last AC socket on the run. I don't need to go all the way up to the end of the boat because we're not having AC sockets there. So marking them out yesterday was the right thing to do because now I know where everything's going. But I still need to trim all the way along there because the DC's going all the way up the end.
Right, that's all done. Uh, that took a wee while. Uh, particularly, up, particularly up in the bow. I swear the person doing the spray foam must have been stopped and have a conversation with somebody and just hold and go and let that in there, boys. Masses and masses and masses of spray foam, uh, which had to come off because, you know, the cladding won't go on. So I just need a bit of tidy up. It's raining again. Uh, I wanted to get those deck boards cut in the last couple of days, but no chance. That'll just have to wait. But yeah, that's that's the view from the back of the boat in the pouring rain. People have got their fires on. Ah, that's wet. Okay, so had a bit of lunch, moved everything over to the starboard side, no, the port side because it's your left, not my left. And the starboard side, well, let's do what we've done for the last couple of days. On this side, clear the spray foam, get the battening cleared, clear the area for the electrics and check under the gunnels, it's square for the cable tray. I'm not gonna video it, cause, mm, you know, life's far too short. <laughs> However, it needs a bit of help, a wee bit of the brew, that's what we need. Taking a while though, it's a bit laborious, I have to confess. Uh, and I've been at it a long time today and my arm is just, uh, it's shaking on its own from the multi-tool. If I never see spray foam again, I'll be happy. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> Finished! Well, what a long day. Uh, but all the spray foam is now trimmed and square under the gunnels. I've got a cable run for the DC. I've got a cable run uh, for the AC. Everything's flat, everything's ready. So I'm gonna go and tidy up uh, as usual. At least I don't have to move everything from port to starboard. Uh, but I'm going to give my arm a rest. Boy, uh, what's that? Six hours? Six hours of vibrating multi-tool on the arm is uh, uh, painful, actually. Wakens up the old RSI. So it's the end of the week. Um, it's been quite a short week. It's only a couple of days we've done this week. Uh, although I have been continuing to paint uh, the cladding in my garage at home. Uh, plus Roma had a day off this week and I said, hey, great, let's go to the boat. We can cut some spray foam. She said, let's go to the pub. Pub one. So look, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thanks for liking, thanks for watching, because, you know, it's cool. Uh, thanks for subscribing, and uh, we'll see you next time. And if you're interested, coming up next week is the last of the big jobs, uh, this, the kind of infrastructure aid jobs. We're gonna take up the subfloor, we're gonna varnish it, we're gonna put down some uh, insulation, Roma's got a week off to help me with that, which is brilliant. So, join us next week.